Let's say YouTube. Yeah, let me turn the music down a little bit. Sorry, I had to take my mind back. But um, today, uh, I'm gonna share a little uh, insight on the on uh, what to expect at uh, MEPS, uh, that being Military Entrance Process Station. Um, for me, I have MEPS in Georgia um, because that is where I'm from. So just want to give you guys a full disclaimer. Things might be a little bit different depending on where you went and when you went and uh, maybe even who you went with. But I'm basically going to tell you what to expect. First things first, uh, my experience was definitely different from most people. Um, I kind of had everything done quicker than usual, or I'd say quicker than the, um, and my mom is, sorry, but, um, my process was definitely quicker than most people. It was definitely quicker than usual, um, pretty much because, um, not to say it makes any difference, but I'm a little bit more of age, so I kind of knew exactly what I needed, and I had everything um, that I was supposed to have. Um, also, um, I was just ready over. I, I just know I, I just knew I was more prepared uh, compared to everybody else. But definitely, what to expect um, if you do get sent to a hotel um, beforehand? Not beforehand, but. Um, Excuse me, you definitely will be going to a hotel before you go to MEPS, or at least that's what I did. Um, obviously, I showed up the day before, and um, in your way to the hotel, you are checked in, typically with your recruiter. At least with me, it was my recruiter. Um, by the way, I am in listening to the Navy. Um, um, but, yeah, typically with my recruiter, and then she left us off at the door, um, and then from there on, I was uh, greeted, um, had watched a little introductory video um got all settled in got my room um met a few cool people there that was also enlisting uh most of them was either my age or younger um and it was a few people that was over my age um we uh got our rooms pretty nice hotel we was at the carton ritz hotel in midtown atlanta which i was very familiar with so I knew uh, kind of about the hotel. I know I heard people was going to the pool and everything beforehand um, on that day before. Um, not too sure if they said they swim or not, I'd assume, or I'd imagine they would. Um, but either way it goes, you can't do that if that's what you're expecting. For me, after I ate, I definitely uh, played a video game while I was there with a couple of other people that I was there that I knew and some of the people that I rode to the hotel with um, because I was accompanied. Um, but yeah, you, it's pretty much a welcome space. Uh, it, it's not strict at all. It's a uh, very chill, laid back. Um, the food, as far as the food goes, not the best food, not saying it's completely shit. Just from my personal experience, it did make my stomach hurt. Um, but depending on what you get, that could be, uh, the difference. I know it did smell good if that matters. Um, so it's not like, you know, they was just feeding us garbage. Like I said, just for me, it was just a different experience. So I didn't really eat too much there. Uh, actually ended up buying snacks and shit like that. But the following morning when you got to wake up to go to MAPS, you usually wake up around 4, 4.30ish. Me, I woke up around 3.30ish, um, kind of sat on my bed for a little while. And then uh, got dressed, got ready. Um, they do advise most people to take a shower at night before you wake up so you won't have to worry about it in the morning just, be, just in case you... Uh, run late or anything and don't really have time to take a shower um just to get that out of the way obviously me i took a shower in the morning though because i knew i was gonna be able to wake up um woke my roommate up they do have some sort of buddy system where they do want you to uh if you do have a roommate wake your roommate up and everything um don't really leave don't leave the room without your roommate um um and make sure they're up and on the way out with you obviously um, I know for me, when we did check out after breakfast, we definitely uh, needed our buddy to be with us. And so, um, not after breakfast, but before and after breakfast, um, you needed your roommate to be with you if you had one. And um, you checked out uh, with each other pretty much after handing your cards and everything. 
But yeah, like I said, it was pretty chill and laid back. Even on the bus ride there, it was about an hour drive, I think, um, to Fort Gillum, all the way in Georgia. I think that was like uh, near Macon. I'm not really too, sh I'm not too sure to be honest. But um, like an hour bus ride. Uh, I was on my phone, but I was pretty much just listening to music the whole way there. Uh, it was pretty cold, so I was chilling for the most part. Uh, um, what else? Yeah, that was pretty much that. So on the way into Mets, once we got there, um, not too sure if this matters too much in detail, but it did line us up in two lines, not gender specific. I know it was, uh, it was, our group was definitely majority boys compared to girls. The ratio was definitely off. So I don't think uh, that mattered too much. Um, they just had us in two lines coming in, letting us know that we was about to go through a scanner, metal detector and everything, how we had to have certain things on or off, uh, what we needed in the hand, stuff like that. Also, before going to MEPS, um, I'd assume your recruiter will let you know or have, has told you or did tell you or will tell you. Um, you will need all your important documents, so that being um, social security card, not too sure. Not too sure it matters if it's the original or the copy. Uh, birth certificate, uh, and I believe whatever medical records they required you to bring or whatever. I'm not too sure, but for me, I brought all my important documents that I needed in my entire recruit recruitment process. That being the first two that I mentioned: medical documents, um, my high school diploma, um, my college transcript that I also did have. Um, definitely uh, bring that if you um, don't know already to bring all of those documents and uh, just anything else that you believe is important for you to bring. I'm not really going to go too far in detail on that because like I said, your recruiter should tell you. But um, yeah, so once you did that, we got all checked in and everything once again in MEPS uh, and then they dispersed us into our separate branches. Um, and once we got to our branches, we talked to the people in the office. They pretty got, they pretty much got us uh, all checked in again, make sure everybody's there, I guess. Uh, make sure they have everybody and know who's there. Um, then after that, they all put us in the lounge and we all just sat pretty much for not too long. But it was, once again, chill. It wasn't really too much, uh, it wasn't yelling at all, to be honest. It wasn't like it was, you know, lining us up in lines making us stand square by square hands by side not talking or nothing we was in the uh lounge just chilling and talking not too loud obviously but it was it was pretty cool um then after that we uh we kind of got straight into it i'm not too sure if it depended on the group we was in or just um this is how the mess is now but i know we went straight to a room where we was planning to get our medical uh examinations and um uh, physical done, uh, the thorough physical test that we do go through. Um, we filled out a few documents beforehand and everything. Uh, once we did that, we pretty much uh, got sat down and uh, just kind of ordered ourselves into uh, obviously different groups. They did pair us up into different groups. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, boys and girls, obviously. And we got our blood drawn, we got our urine drawn, or we gave urine samples, and uh, we also took a vision test. Obviously, the urine samples were for the drug test to see if um, you uh, had been under the influence or had anything in your system. Uh, blood samples to make sure you don't have HIV or AIDS, because then that's an automatic disqualification. Um, and a vision test to see if you needed glasses uh, for boot camp, essentially, or going into the military. Me personally, uh, just to speak, even though I knew and I wanted to bring my glasses, I just didn't because I, I didn't want it to be a burden on me because I really only use them when I drive or I'm in a classroom learning or just any some environment, any type of environment where I got a seat far away and I know I'm not going to be able to see those words. I have my glasses on me. But in that case, I didn't think I was going to be put in that situation. And I wasn't, but either way that goes, I didn't bring my glasses. And so when I took the vision test, obviously, I damn near, I basically felt that shit and uh, got my, uh, pres I got prescribed glasses. So that would be given to me on, I believe, the first, within the first week of boot camp, obviously. 
Um, whether I have to wear them or not, I'm not too sure. But if I don't have to, I won't, quite honestly, because like I said, I don't use them to drop. But if you just needed to know, they do give you glasses and prescribe you glasses if you need them or if you don't already have some. So that is something to uh, take into account. Um, so don't worry if you fail the test, is what I'm saying. Um, but definitely try when you do take the test. Um, after that, you also do an audio test, basically just so they can see, uh, your, understand your hearing and see if you're able to hear certain things correctly, just to make sure everything is, uh, all your acoustic uh, signals are normal, pretty much. And uh, that's what we did. It was kind of fun. It kind of felt like a game. <laughs> the officer there uh, did the little test for us. She was chill. She was funny. We was making jokes with each other and everything. Um, professionally, obviously, but um, yeah. So after that, after all of those things are done, that's when you go to your physical exam. They check your height and weight. If you're overweight, they get your specific uh, um, features and measure those, like your waist or your neck or whatever. Um, me, it was just my height and weight. I wasn't overweight, um, but they say I was close. Not was, but like you know, close. Um, I'm kind of I'm I'm a fit lean so you know even that is something to also something to note uh, if you're coming in kind of fit and lean for your height and yeah just just to be uh, just to know you may already know it, it really don't even matter um, if anything it's just protocol I don't really care too much about that but um, yeah after that is when you actually start your physical yes you do have to strip down naked. Or at least nude all the way into your in your uh, underwear for men, girls. I really don't even know. Obviously, it should be a bra and underwear. Uh, and you get sent into a room with a doctor. With this doctor, she examines your body, makes sure your movements are correct. You do a couple of duck walking exercises, exercises walking in general, crouch exercises, squats, uh, walking on your toes. I believe tippy toeing, just a lot of different things just to see what your mobility is like and your flexibility they check to see if you have scoliosis or not things of that nature obviously like i said it is a thorough physical exam um they do also check your for boys they take your testicles and look into your um your um your bum they look at your bum definitely that um i don't know if they say they touch it but I, either way if, for me, I know they didn't touch my bum. They just, uh, you know, um, handled my um, testicles as far as that went. Um, sorry if I'm being too descriptive too, but I'm just giving it to you guys bluntly just so you would know and won't be surprised. Um, it's not bad, it's quick, it's in and out, literally. I know for me, it was two people in there when they was checking me uh, up and down after the actual physical exam. So, like I said, it was in and out, it was quick, it was what it was. And then after all that, the doctor will keep you in there, and then they'll ask you just uh, pretty much questions you ask, they pretty much questions you were asked while being recruited with your recruiter. Um, everything uh, you pretty much already put down on paper, but they just kind of want to see if those same answers translate over into uh, present day. That being the day you're at Maps, just to see if it's anything that has updated with you, or even if to see if you're lying. I'm not too sure if it was people in there that failed that part. Um, that was definitely claimed to be one of the most uh, disqualifiable uh, areas within the physical process, the medical uh, exam process, was people weren't answering, um, the, giving the same responses, giving the same responses they were originally, pretty much. But I know for me it was simple. At the end of the day, if you say the same thing you said, um, people always warn you about not self-admitting and stuff. Just literally say the same thing you said when. Um, you were being recruited because obviously if you made it that far then obviously everything you said uh is uh meets the requirements for you to even be in, uh entering the military right so that's uh simple is all i'm saying um be truthful and just say the same thing you said before um that's all that they'll tell you if you pass or not um pr happens quickly as well when once you pass it takes like 10 10 minutes i think for them to tell you if you did or did not once you do, you go all the way back to your branch office. And once you go to your branch office, your branch office in MEPS, um, you meet with an officer and I believe you fill out some more documents and you fill out background documents once again, like you did before in the original 
in the in prior to your uh, recruitment process, um, just to like I said, just so they can get an update and confirmation on uh, things you already responded to and gave answers to beforehand, all the way up until now, you know, up to date uh, information pretty much. They just it seems like it's just a lot of confirmation. They just want to see if things change, and so that's what that is pretty much. Um, after that, you meet with an officer. Once you meet with an officer, you pretty much go over um, what job you are looking to get and everything, and they tell you what you qualify for. Um, as you may know already, or at least you should, um, your recruiter should tell you this, but um, it's obviously a job compiler, and what it is is called an optimizer, and they pretty much optimize the a job list that's set out for that current month based off of previous uh, uh, data points or whatever and it gives you a list of what jobs they are in high demand and what jobs are available in that time period for literally that month or at least that's what I was told. Um, me going in I already knew what job I wanted and I already knew what jobs were going to be in high demand even with the little system they had going on just because I was on the website and, and I just had a little bit more insight in general. Um, about my job and what um, was in demand at the time, quite honestly. Um, you give out a top five, and based off that top five, um, they'll give you, at least this is what they did to me, that top five, they'll give you um, any information you need on those five jobs, um, whether you know it or not, just so you can be aware of what you're signing up for. And then they'll also show you the enlistment bonuses and just even more thorough information based on that job. Um, after that, you end up selecting a job. Once you do that, they will put in the system, sign you up for that job. Obviously, that job is not guaranteed or um, promised to you beforehand. It's just what job you are saying you would most likely, uh, it's what job you're basically saying you most likely desire. Um, after that, they will send you to a clearance or security type um, department into MEPS. I forget what it's called. But this is pretty much where you get your finger scan, your hand scan, and everything. Literally, they go through every single finger from this hand to the other and uh, scan your fingers for security purposes. And um, once they do that, you're in the system. You also find out your rank if you didn't know by then, um, which you should, most likely. Um, so that's good to know. Most people already know because unless you have any sort of... Um, um, extra extra things giving you a edge to jump ranks before you get in then you already know you're going to go in as an e1 obviously but like i said you find all that out once you leave from that room and you get done with everything you go back and uh meet with your officer again they tell you everything is in process and they'll tell you to go back out to the lounge and just sit and wait around this time is when you eat lunch too as well so they do feed you while you're at maps or at least when I was at MIPS, that's what they did. Like I said before in the beginning of this video, things could change depending on where you're at. But like I said, they will feed you at MIPS from my experience. Um, then um, also your officer would tell you to just come back after a little while and you'll meet with a classifier. Classifier is just another officer in that same room. That's the name of which they call that um, role. And pretty much he's the guy that's telling you what job you're getting. He's giving out the contract and he is filling out the waiver or sending the waivers to be confirmed and accepted or whatever they do with it um, if needed to be. Um, for me, I did have a waiver for something, forgot what it was, but um, all in all, it was accepted and confirmed and it did go through um, and I ended up getting my job. Um, also, if you guys do want to know my job, please let me down, know down low in the description. Either way it goes, I'm still going to show y'all and let y'all know about it in another video. Um, it should be somewhere on this video. If it's not, just click through my channel or somewhere or I'll make sure it's somewhere for you guys to find it. Um, either way that goes, you get sent with the classifier um, to basically um, lock you in with your military uh, enlistment contract. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure you know how much your bonuses is, what your job will be, and um, just everything of that nature, obviously. And uh, that's pretty much the final process of your MEPS uh, um, experience and what to expect. Um, so you sign that contract at that point. Not too sure if anything is up for negotiation 
at that point because for me I didn't negotiate but definitely if you are not comfortable or you feel like you're not being in a bit put in the best position um, on your side of the bargain because do remember it is an agreement and obviously if you feel like you're not being offered something you feel is reasonable for what you're putting up then by all means do not sign that contract because at the end of the day you do have the right to not sign that contract um, that's just that's in life and that's just in anything uh, requiring a signature uh, as part of an agreement um, but definitely read the fine print all the way to the period make sure you are knowing what you're getting yourself into thoroughly read the contract and ask any questions that you need to ask uh, before you sign anything and just uh, make sure you're making the best decision possible for yourself and if you don't know if you are at the time um, my honest advice is don't sign the contract and then and just ask for help in any way possible honestly I don't know but like I said um, that was just my experience I didn't really need negotiating I knew what I was getting into and I signed the contract with no uh, issues um, so that was that uh, after that it's pretty much uh, the end of the day you know uh, if you ever been to like <laughs> If you have, uh, not if you ever been to, I don't even know why I just said that. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the day right there. Um, you end up going home after that, obviously. If you roll with your recruiter on the way to the hotel the day before, then most likely they'll probably pick you up again to take you back to wherever you came from um, after MEPS. And that's how that'll go. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, it's really chill. It's not no big issue. The day really flies by. Like, it really does, trust me. A lot of people make it seem like it's just, it goes on and on and it, it's like non-stop, like, no, nah, it's, it, it go by pretty, you know, fast, it's, so it's cool. Um, but yeah, you meet a lot of funny people there too, at least I did. Um, I definitely enjoyed myself, wasn't really up for no lame shit while I was there, I was pretty much just chilling the whole day, but yeah, that's that. Really hope you guys get a, have a better understanding of what to expect. Uh, at your maps day and uh, like I said if you want to see anything any more videos about uh, the military and just the enlistment process or entering the military or even job selection um, check out my other videos most likely I should have it up if I don't I will have it up soon you can come back for another one anyways I'll see y'all later and peace